Welcome. Greek scholars of ancient times, around 500 BC and a little bit onwards, um, just reveled in delight in playing with numbers. They found great beauty and great structure and great mystery in the, just the simple counting numbers. And the sorts of things they looked at with um, numbers and their factors, and then there were some curious things happens with number six. The number six is factors one, two, three, and six, but I'm going to ignore the whole number itself and just add up the remaining numbers. One plus two plus three is back to six. 28 has this property. If you list its factors, 1, 2, uh, 4, 7, 14, I'll ignore 28 itself. Add up the small factors of 28. 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, plus another 7 is 14, plus 14 is back to being 28. The next number with this property is 496. You can check that its factors add up to itself. 81828 8, 1, 8 is the next, and so on. And they've called these numbers perfect. Numbers whose factors, ignore the whole number itself, add up back to itself. And the Greeks played with this, and uh, there are many questions that they asked that are still unsolved today. For example, no one knows that the list of perfect numbers goes on forever. Um, all the numbers the Greeks found turned out to be even. No one to this day has yet found an odd perfect number, nor has proven that one can't exist. And, uh, and all sorts of questions exist. But the Greeks were very clever, and they noticed that this perfect number seemed to have another property. For example, 6. We've already seen that's 1 plus 2 plus 3, and it's called the third triangle number. 28 turns out to equal 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. All the numbers added from 1 to 7, and that's called the seventh triangle number. 496 turns out to be 1 plus 2 plus 3, you go all the way up to 31. That turns out, that's the, called the 31st triangle number. 8128 is 1 plus 2 plus 3, da, 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 uh, go all the way up to 127. The 127th prime. Um, triangle number. And notice, 3 is 1 less than 4, a power of 2. 7 is 1 less than uh, 8, a power of 2. 31 is 1 less than 32. 127 is 1 less than 28. In fact, these are all prime numbers that are 1 less than a power of 2. These are the Mersenne primes. So have a little look at the video on the Mersenne primes for me to, where I talk about those. So it looks like Every, at least even, this is the only example we've got, tr a, triangle, a, a perfect number is triangular with a it index being a Mersenne prime. So, what I'd like to prove now is prove this fact. Um, Euclid made one step of it. He managed to prove, I need, need to clear some space here, that if a number is of the form, n, whoops, where's my pen? n is of the form 2 to the p times 2 to the p minus 1, all over 2, there's a formula of the triangle number. If this guy turns out to be prime, then the number's perfect. And I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. It wasn't until Euler came along some 2,000 years later, they managed to prove that every even number, even perfect number, must be of this form. And that's what I'd like to do today. And it's going to take a little bit of work, and it's going to be hard. And I'll see if I can re reconstruct the proof at the top of my head as we go along, and we'll just see what happens. So, what I'm going to do is prove that every even perfect must in fact be triangular. Here goes. Uh, I need a nice pen. So let's start with a number, n. Now every number has some twos in it. Let's say it has, uh, I know, n minus one twos in it and equals something times an odd. And since it's even, I'm going to assume there's at least one two in this group here. So we write every number as a power of two times, times an odd number. Great. And let's suppose the factors of m uh, 1, the only factor of m, and I'll just call them d1 up to dk, and the whole number m itself. So they're the factors of m. Then I'm going to ask, what's the factors of n? So we're going to assume this is perfect. That is, its factors, except for the whole number itself, add up to itself. That means, well, let's, let's just do it. So what are the factors of 2 to the n minus 1 times m? Well, I've certainly got all the factors that are of m. So I've got 1 plus d1 plus d2 da, 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 plus m. Uh, let me call that S. Plus, I've got two times those. I'm going to take one of these twos and do all those factors. So double this, 1 plus D2 plus da, da, up to M. So that's two S's. Plus, I've got, uh, if I've got, I take two of these twos, four of them, 4, 1 plus D2 up to, up to M. That's another four S's. All the way up to uh, the whole power of 2 itself, 2 to the N minus 1 times one of each of these factors of M. And there's another S. So the factors of m, if I add them all together, sum to uh, s plus 2s plus 4s, all the way up to 2 to the n minus 1 s's. Common factor of s, 1 plus 2 da, 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 plus uh, 2 to the n minus 1. 
um, assuming we're familiar with the geometric series or we know how powers of 2 work, this is actually s times 2 to the n minus 1 on 2 minus 1, s times 2 to the n minus 1. So here goes, s is the sum of the factors of m, and we've just proved that the sum of the factors of n uh, is s times 2 to the n minus 1. All right, that's quick and messy, but there we go. Well, if the number's perfect, if I sum all the factors of n, all of them including the whole big one itself, I am going to get n plus the whole big factor itself, if the number's perfect, the sum of all the small factors up to n plus the extra n, and this equals s times 2 to the n minus 1, apparently. Well, that is 2 times n is s times 2 to the little n minus 1, and what was n? Well, there's a formula for it. Shove that in. 2 to the n times m equals s times 2 to the n minus 1. So I've got this equation to play with. Now I'll play with it. Da, 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 da. I wish I had a huge screen right now. Instead of having a huge screen, I'll just use a different colored pen. All right, let's, let's play with this. Um, I'm going to solve for s. That is, remember, s was the sum of the factors of n. Whoops, need a pen. Some of the factors of m. Got to get my enunciation right. So s would be, according to this formula, 2 to the n times m over 2 to the n minus 1. Well, I'm going to actually make the numerator look like the denominator by going 2 to the n times m minus m plus m all over 2 to the n minus 1, because I've got a common factor of m there. If I pull that out, I'm left with m times 2 to the n minus 1 to be divided by 2 to the n minus 1, so it's m plus m over 2 to the n minus 1. So there, there is a formula for the sum of the factors of m. Well, this is mighty strange, because the sum of the factors of n, m, sorry, that's an integer. Whoops, where's my pen? That's an integer, therefore we've got no choice, for this has to be an integer. That is, m must be divisible by 2 to the n minus 1. So I could write m is m over 2 to the n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. That is, I'll call this thing A, and I'll call this thing B. I've now factored M as A times B. Well, I claim we're in a bit of a pickle right now. Because what have we got? We've got that this equation in green, I'll write this now in dark green, says that S is M plus the thing I called A. That is, the sum of all the factors of M, all of them, is M plus A. Hang on, I know, I know what this guy, that's definitely one of the factors of m. And I know that 1 is a factor of m. Where is it? And if m is actually a product of two things, where's the factor b? I'm in a bit of a pickle. I know 1 has to be in the sum, and I know b should be this, in the sum. The only way out of this pickle if, is if a is in fact 1. That would it, be it. Which means m is 2 to the n minus 1. That is... So I have to conclude that A is 1. So M is 2 to the N minus 1. Which means for N to be big N to be perfect, N must be the form 2 N minus 1 times 2 to the N minus 1, which is exactly what I wanted in Euclid's form. 2 to the N, 2 to the N minus 1, all over 2. It must be triangular. Um, actually, I'm go a little bit further. We've now deduced since A is 1 that S is M plus 1. This is also telling me that m only has two factors, itself and 1. Because remember, s was the sum of all the factors, and there's only two of them here. Therefore, s must be prime. So not only must n be of the form 2n minus 1, it must be a prime of this form. We've just proven that m must be a mesen prime. That's it. For a number to be even and perfect, it must be of the form a triangular number of the form t 2 to the n minus 1, that is where the index here is a mesen prime, just as we discovered earlier on. So that's Euler. Euler back in the 1700s did this approach. Clever, clever guy. All right, thanks very much.